has just been uploaded. From Wikipedia, the Apple Extended Keyboard, Model M, 0115 is a keyboard that was first sold separately alongside the Macintosh 2 and SE starting in 1987. It was discontinued and replaced in 1990 by the Apple Extended Keyboard 2, Model M, 3501 which was pre-packaged with Apple Professional Desktop starting with the Macintosh 2 SI. Both versions were very similar, differing primarily with the addition of adjustable height legs in the Apple Extended Keyboard 2 and other minor changes. Both used Apple Desktop Bus to connect to the host computer with ports on either side to allow daisy chaining of another input device, typically a computer mouse or trackball. The move to USB connections starting with the original iMac led to the introduction of new keyboard designs using rubber dome switches rather than Alps electric switches. This, in turn, has led to a market for third-party keyboards that replicate some of the Apple Extended Keyboard 2 feel with Mahia's line of Tactile Pro and Quiet Pro keyboards perhaps being the most notable. Among the features that make this keyboard unique are a separate power key using a different keycap, caps lock key that physically locks down when activated, considered to be better for touch typists, Alps Electric Company brand mechanical key switches, Credited for their good sound and feel, large spacing between keys, especially the top function keys and others. The width of the keyboard matches the width of the Macintosh 2. The height allows it to fit under the chin of the Macintosh SE. Two small cylinders project vertically from the top of the keyboard on either side of the function keys. These were used to hold templates with application-specific key guides. The original Apple Extended Keyboard's case was sloped upward towards the rear so that when viewed from the side it formed a continuous convex curve. The case extended downward to sit on the desk, so it provided considerable internal volume. The case also had a significant amount of empty space at the rear, behind the top row of keys. This made for a relatively large and heavy case. The plastic of the case shell below the keyboard section on top was serrated a common detail found on many Apple products of the era. Unlike previous Macintosh keyboards, the key layout was very similar to the IBM PC its keyboard. In order to improve usability of MS-DOS programs, run via emulation or coprocessor board. So, that is a brief history on the Apple Extended Keyboard 2. I have enjoyed sharing this information with you but that being said we will now turn the rest of the video over to Dave where he will do a teardown and retro writing and cleaning on this near mint Apple extended keyboard too. Thank you, Samantha, for that nice little brief introduction. And uh, yes, we're going to take this Apple keyboard away. This is a model 3501. Uh, this came out roughly in 1990 uh, after the original Apple extended keyboard was uh, discontinued in 1990. This one took its place. This is the uh, Apple Keyboard 2, Extended Keyboard 2. And so anyway, um, it's in fantastic shape. It works beautifully. However, as you can see, the cover here is yellowed. Uh, the keys themselves are fine. They're nice and white looking. Um, but that's the problem with these is because this is made out of ABS plastic and ABS plastics from the basically from the latter 70s to even the early 90s are notorious for yellowing mainly because of two factors um, it's an environmental thing um, and ultraviolet does kind of speed it up but the main reason why it discolors like that is because when they do injection molding there's a particular chemical they put in the plastic to keep when they extrude it when they put it in a mold under intense uh, pressure and heat um, it would catch on fire so they would have to put a chemical agent in there to keep it from catching on fire and so that chemical agent after time leaches out and so uh, that's why these particular ones kind of do this these keys are made of a, a different material I believe it's called a ADP plastic and so anyway you can look on the back side and you can see it's much wider and that's pretty close to the actual collar that it should be it's even just a 
tad bit lighter. If you look right here, that's probably the, the really the true color of it. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart. There's only one screw that holds this together, and there's all kinds of tabs that we have to be very careful to pry the top off. Um, the keys themselves, I'm not going to tear them apart to clean them, but I will uh, take air and blow all out of there. Because like I said, these things work perfectly. There's no issue with them. Um, this thing has been pretty much stored for, for about 13, 15 years, so I, I don't think it really had much use. And the only thing it has, it has just a little boo boo right there, but I'm going to I'm gonna get rid of that majority of it. We'll, we'll do a little touch up on it. But anyway, uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. And we will give the keys just a little regular clean with soap and water. But like I said, they look fantastic. Um, yeah, so this is be pretty nice. You know, these things, um, if you can find one new in the box, they go for about 400 bucks. I mean, these are one of the best keyboards that Apple ever made. These are very desirable. Professional typists love these things. Um, this has a unique feature, as uh, Samantha said on the intro, the uh, cap lock on here. And uh, unfortunately, keyboards nowadays don't have that luxury. So anyway, yeah, so this is going to be um, a nice little retro writing and uh, should look uh, pretty good. I'm going to do it a little differently here, um, and uh, we'll see that. So we're going to pull that off too. The space bar is also ABS plastic, but everything else, all the other keys are made out of the other material. And uh, the other unique thing about this keyboard is the main difference between this and the original one is the uh, legs are adjustable on it. And uh, yeah. well, there you go. So like this. So you just push that out. Like that. There you go. See it come out. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll address that too. When we clean it, that'll work a little smoother too. I think it's just a little gummed up in there. But all the rubber is good on it. Uh, as you can see, that's the model number on it right there. Okay. And uh, yeah, so we're going to work on that and get that going good. Um, this also has the two ADP connectors on it there. And there you go. And it also has the uh, power switch on it too. So you can do the soft power on some of the older classic machines. Um, so anyway, yeah, so we're going to be tearing it apart in a little bit. Okay guys, so we're going to take the covers off of this thing. I have my little iFixit guide over there, so that's going to be my reference material because it's the first time I've ever opened one of these up before. And we do got to be careful with it because like uh, ABS plastics, with time they do get brittle too, so we got to be really careful not to break any of the tabs or anything. So what we're going to do first is we're going to flip over and there's a screw right there and we're going to take that screw out because that's basically what anchors it. Okay, so there's a screw, we took that out and then we're going to flip it over And then there's some little tabs right here, and they're real loose. Let's see here. Let's see here. Tabs are. Right. So we're gonna take and flip this over here and pop these off here. There we go. And it should just come right off just like that. There we go. They suggest use an opening tool, but it's it's real loose. So anyway, so as you can see, here's the color it should be. Okay, see quite a quite a bit. Maybe on camera it doesn't look, but it's definitely very yellow compared to the other side here. So anyway, yeah. So uh, everything is intact, absolutely in perfect condition. And you'll see, like, a lot of times on this injected bowl of plastic, you're going to see from the factory, you're going to see little imperfections. And that's not a defect. That's just the way these are made. So that doesn't deter from the value of these things. Now, if you get, like, a big nick or scratch in it, that's different. But these are just mold marks from when it was in the mold. So anyway, all right. And also, one tall tale, too, is on the Apple II extended keyboard, the Apple logo's up here. On the Apple extended keyboard, 
the regular one, the first one, the logo would be down here. That's another way you can spot them right away. So, okay, so we're going to lay that off to the side here. And now, so what we need to do is we need to uh, get this board out of it. And there's little connectors here. There's one, two, and again, you to be very careful with these. But before we take those out, we need to get these uh, A, uh, ADB connectors out here. And so there's a plug on them too. So let's, but we're not going to unplug it from the board. We'll just uh, take them out and I think we can get it out. So let's see, supposedly these slide up like that and then just very gently pick up on the board here. This is a very fragile. Let's see here. I might, you know, I might want to just unplug this first. I think that's going to give us a little bit more room here. Yeah, let's see here. So let's just plug in there. Okay. Because we've got to lift these out. So there we go, like that. There we go. And then we're going to do the other one here too. Like so. So we're going to fingernail. Uh, just kind of relax that a little bit and just, and just kind of pull up on the little circuit board, flip it up like that. And then now we should be able to take this out. So what they say is very gingerly, you're going to push on these, don't over, because they will snap off. And you're going to lift up on this board. Let's see here. Is there another one on here? Let's see. Hmm. See, there's also connectors here, too. I'm just looking here how they make that. Very interesting how they make that. Okay, so pushes off like that. Okay, all right. So we gotta be careful with this here. So we're gonna push this way, push these back. Okay, almost got it. Let's try it again here. There we go. There we got it. There. There's out free. And then it says lift up and out. And these little tabs right here. Um, all right, so we gotta pull it out of here. Like that. Let's see here. We don't want to break anything. You see, that's part of the case here, this here. Let's set it on the side here. See. There we go. We'll get it out this way here. Like I said, things have been in there for a long time. There we go. Okay. We are out. There we go. Got it out. Uh, no casualties. Yeah, there's a little fuzz in there. Not terrible, but not as bad as what I thought it would be, that's for sure. And then this is the lower case here, and again, you can see the inside of it there, very nice and bright. Uh, we have to take this out too. This is a little foil shield here. It just is just clipped in there. And then just these little springs here. I'll we'll take these little springs out. And uh, that would be a lot of fun getting back in there because we want to be able to get all these pieces out so we can clean it. But yeah, yeah, pretty easy to take apart actually. So.
So anyway, let's um, let me kind of identify some of the parts here. Kind of educate both of us here. Let me get my little information here. So the first thing is the uh, the brains of it here is the uh, Toshiba chip here. And uh, let's see, that's the, the delete here. So here's the, the brains of it here. Let's uh, get this in camera here, right there. That's a Toshiba chip. And uh, it is a, a TC... 4515B P binary controller. So that is the brains of it. And then the next chip is a Fairchild CD4515BCN decoder. And that is the, um, this one here, right here. Get in there. That's the uh, decoder right there, decoder chip right there. I'm getting the light just right there so you can see it there. Okay, that's the decoder chip right there. And then the uh, hex inverter is over here. This is the hex inverter. And there are three LEDs. And, a gar and then these are the uh, ADP bus connectors right here. So anyway, yeah, so... Um, Again, comes out pretty easy. So, what we're going to do now is we are, I'm going to put this off to the side and I'll need my cheat sheet here. And so, we're going to take this off here. Push down. So, anyway, let's see here how we get this. I see you push down on it here. Can I get that off? Let's try. Let's see what we got here. There we go. So we got that out. And again, no damage. Okay. We'll put that over there. Now we can take this spring out. And uh, bring out here, and uh, pretty clean, no rust on it. Well, I take that back. There's just like a little oxidation, but we can we can fix that. We'll just take some uh, steel wool and pretty that up. Okay. Now to get. I'm gonna get the uh, foot out of here. Let me see how this works here. Okay, so I think you gotta spread this here a little bit to get that out. Let's see here. Let's see. I gotta get you very careful with this stuff. Very brittle. Oh no, I think I gotta take this out first. Let me uh, look at the let me look at my paper here. I don't remember how to get this out here. Clips. Oh, okay, I think this is what holds it together. Okay guys, um, I tried to get this thing out and I do not want to break this cover so I'm just going to leave that piece in. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, so I'm going to retro bright it and it's all plastic. There's no metal parts in here so it's not going to hurt it. We'll wash out real good with soap and water when we're all done. But uh, you know, because I don't want to damage the keyboard. So anyway, 
what we're going to do next is we are going to retrobite it. So we're going to, I'll show you what I'm going to use to do that. Okay, hold on just a second. Okay, guys, so this is what I'm going to use to uh, uh, reverse the uh, yellowing on the plastic here. Uh, this is, a, I get this at uh, one of the uh, salon places. They actually use this stuff, taxidermists use this stuff to bleach bones, which I thought that was kind of interesting because when I was getting it, he get, um, I ran into a guy that what does, does taxidermy and he says, this makes it nice and white. So I use this and I'll tell you what, this is the best stuff to brighten it up that I've ever used. It's got uh, hydrogen peroxide in it and it's a very high concentration of uh, hydrogen uh, peroxide. But, you know, the thing about this is, and I've used this both ways, I've used this outdoors in the ultraviolet, I've used it indoors, and with this, honestly, I get the same results. So, you know, a lot of guys do the ultraviolet lights and stuff, and um, I find it really, uh, this works just fine. And to be honest with you, your fluorescent lights, LED lights, it all emits ultraviolet. Um, what inhibits it is like on the fluorescence if you have a diffuser on it, and that's what inhibits the ultraviolet. But if you have like uh, transition lenses or, or photosensitive, they will react to the light, especially I, uh, LED lights. Ladies always complain at her work that they have transition lenses and they can't put their makeup on because they're getting dark because they have a whole bank of LED lights. And I said, yeah, because they emit a certain wavelength of UV. So. Anyway, uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna just take this. Um, uh, I'll probably just do it in here. Um, I just don't want my kitty to to get on it. So um, I'm. It doesn't take much either. And I'm gonna do the bottom case, the top case, and the space bar. Which it was a lot of fun getting off it because these things have never been off. And they even say if you never pulled these off, uh, they're really hard to get off on the R. So you can see that's the inside. There's the outside, much, much yellower. See? Should look more like a cream color. There we go. So we're gonna, we're gonna get it all uh, slathered up here. I'm gonna use a paintbrush. It doesn't take much. Um, but more is not necessarily better in certain situations. All you have to do every now and then is just kind of, just kind of stir it up a little bit. And uh, so yeah, it's gonna take probably, uh, I'd say half the day. Um, so, but for you guys, it's going to be a short while. So anyway, the idea is to get it looking just like it does here, you know, like that on the, ins on the outside there, on the inside. Okay, so we'll be back in a little bit. Okay guys, so we're gonna put some uh, Beauty Salon product on it here, the uh, volume cream. And I don't have a lot, but that's all right. It doesn't take much to do this. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna Take my brush in here and just kind of gently paint it on here. You don't need a lot of it on here. Like I said, you'll be surprised how well this stuff works. It's really amazing. Um, it's like everything else, so you want to make sure you get it covered nice and even. And like I said, I'm going to speed this video up here and uh, hopefully it doesn't uh, tear up my silk screen here. Usually it doesn't. So. Anyway, and I'm not going to worry about doing the inside of the case because uh, the inside of the case is fine. You know, I'm just going to do the outside and and because uh, this is what you're going to see. And yeah, so I get it all prettied up here.
Hi guys, so uh, we have been retro writing the uh, case for, uh, it's been about uh, three hours now and it's definitely starting to, to look a lot lighter. Uh, we're going to leave it on there for probably most of the day. And then, uh, so now what we're going to do is, uh, while I'm waiting on that, I'm going to clean this keyboard up a little bit. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get some canned air. And I'm just going to start blowing the thread out of it here. And this, this one doesn't have much left in. I got a new can here. I'm going to pop open here in just a second here. So this one's pretty dead already. Anyway, all right. So we got a nice can here. So we're going to blast the air here. There's a lot of thread in there. Just uh, recharge for a minute, and then I'll let that uh, recharge, and I'll blast it some more. And then I'm gonna get okay. So now what we're gonna do? Um, I'm gonna get uh, some Dawn dishwashing soap here, and I'm gonna go over the keys here. And uh, with a little soft cotton face towel, and uh, a lot of hair on there. And anyway, so um, I'll be back. Let me go get it. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna take and clean the keyboard here with some uh, Dawn dishwashing soap and a soft cotton cloth here. And don't worry about getting any water. I mean, we're gonna let this thing dry out anyway, so I'm not worried about that. And anyway, so I'm just going to go over it, and then we'll get into little cracks and stuff. And get all nice and pretty, but these keys look pretty good. They, they don't look too dirty, actually, but, you know, you never know. It looks good, and then you get a bunch of crud off of it. And, um, you know, you can use alcohol, but you got to be really careful, because alcohol will take that silk screen numbers off of there. That's why I use the Dawn dishwashing soap. I learned that the hard way. Classic. I had this on there. So yeah, so I think we're looking pretty good. I'm just going to um, go over with the Q-tip, just all little cracks here. And uh, but I think we're pretty good other than that. And um, yeah, looking good. And so yeah, so we um, so yeah, so I just dried it. I just hit it with the air again. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, I just got to do the Q-tip on it, but I just want to show you the uh, cover here. You can go for a ride here. So anyway, yeah, see, it's uh, it's yeah, it's looking really good there, and that's you can see there's just a little color difference, but it's really lightened up quite a bit. Like I said, it you got to be patient, uh, let it do its thing. I've replied, I just kind of go over it about every hour with a little fresh, uh, so it doesn't dry out. And uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's looking better than. The uh, cat, the uh, space bar key is starting to brighten up now. It's looking good. So this bottom case though is just about all done. Um, so anyway, yeah. So uh, we're gonna let this set for a little longer, and um, then when it's done, we're gonna put it back together. Yeah, I can hardly wait to get it back together. It's looking really good. All right, so I'll see you guys in a bit. And I got this uh, wire all nice and shined up here, and I just went over it with one of those soft sanding sponges. I was using steel wool, but um, it had a little rust spot, so I went ahead and just hit it. It's uh, like uh, 500. It's pretty fine. 
and just uh, just just hardly any pressure at all. And you can, nice thing about it, is you can wrap around the wire. But yeah, it cleaned up pretty good, um, and it looks like brand new again. Although it didn't look bad before, it was just a couple of like like corroded spots on it. But that's it. So yeah, so um, yeah, so we're gonna like I said, we're gonna let that uh, retro bright for several more hours, and uh, then when when it's to my liking, uh, then we will wash it up. And I'm gonna wash it up with soap and water to neutralize everything and dry it off really good. And then we're gonna reassemble. Reassembly should go pretty fast, actually. I think, I think it's harder to take it apart than it is to put it back together. But uh, we will find out. So anyway, yeah, so we're, we're looking good. This, this keyboard is all nice and cleaned up. It's ready to go back in. And uh, yeah, so just, and you can see the older style uh, soldering. I just thought I'd show this to you. Uh, that's the, the manufacturer keyboard there. And it's Alps is the company, Apple Computer Incorporated. And uh, 19, I'm trying to read it here. What does that say? 19, it's like 1989. Yeah. Or is that 1999? Uh, 1999, I think. Sorry, yeah, it's 1989. Yeah, 1989 when this was made. Pretty interesting. And uh, that company is no longer in business. Um, I don't know what the whole history was with them. Um, but yeah, so anyway. Okay, so we, we'll be back in a bit. So this is basically nine hours later. And uh, so the bottom case is all done. It came out really good, okay? Uh, you can see it looks the same on the outside as it does on the inside. Everything came out really good. This lighting in here kind of makes it look a little yellow, but really it's not. It's just kind of a, a, you know, an optical illusion. Um, but anyway, yeah, so it came out really good. And like I said, uh, that uh, Beauty Salon cream works really good. And... Uh, I mean, it looks fantastic. It looks brand new again. The label looks really good. Um, I just went ahead and put on that label too, and it, it brightened it right up too. So it looks really good. So it's, this is like the actual original color that it used to be. And so, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the canned air and just kind of blow. I, I've been getting the water out of it, and I'm going to take the canned air and kind of blow it out and just get the rest of the water out. And then we're going to put the uh, keyboard back to, back on it there. And then uh, I have not washed the top part yet um, of the upper case. Um, uh, it, it looks good, and we're going to do that too, but uh, in the space bar too. So I haven't washed that up, so I'm just going to put the uh, guts back in it here. But uh, let me blow this out with the air, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so we're going to put the, this back together here. And um, make sure on frame here. So first of all, we got to put this back in here. And uh, let's see here. Got to remember how we do this now. So goes in like that. This will be the hard part, getting this back in. There we go. Got that in. These little tabs, got to get it underneath there. Let's see here, let's try this again here. Let's... There we go. Let me get that in there. There we go, put that in there like that. Okay. And then that goes in like that. And this will lay down when the keyboard goes on it, so I'm not worried about that. So, yeah, we're gonna get this in. There we go, got that in. And then the last one here. This one in, there we go. Got that all in there, so that is all in there. And like I said, it'll, it's, it's in there, it's not gonna come out. And, we get the keyboard in, it'll lay flat again. So 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this spring mechanism back in here. So let's see here. Uh, so that's going to go in there. that and that'll go in there like that and that looks to be right and we will just double check it here yep there we go yep. okay. all right make sure i get all the water off of here yeah okay good so excellent all right Okay, so that looks good. So we got that all back together. And now we're going to put the keyboard back in it. So this is this piece, by the way, these clips here, it's actually a big rubber piece here that comes out. And I didn't realize that. So this is all rubber. But that makes it nice that these won't break. So that's, that's a good thing. So, all right, so we're going to put this back in here. So what we have to do is we have to stick these slots in first. Okay. And we have to kind of push them up here because they they kind of, after I cleaned it, they kind of slide out now. So we'll get it here. So there we go. We got those pushed in. Those will get pushed in. That's pushed in. And what we're going to do is we're going to put these uh, Apple desktop ports back in, bus ports, okay, and we're going to get this one in, and we're going to, this gets pushed down in there like so, and that gets pushed back down in there like so, okay, like that, and then that's in, and that just clips down in there, uh, let's see, that like that and that is in there it is in there that's on the mount that's pushed in there and it is basically back together goes good goes good a lot easier and it comes apart that's for sure so anyway yeah sweet all right so now what i'm going to do is um i just gotta uh, wash that top cover off and I'm going to bring the camera over here so you guys can see. Sorry for the rough right here. But you can see it's looking really, really good. Let me um, get this stuff all like that there. But anyway, so it's, it's, it's nice and bright. Um, and uh, I might just let that sit just for a little bit longer. But the, uh, the space bar button's looking really good too. So this was the worst part of all that. So... Anyway, so we'll be back in a few, uh, for you, just a few seconds, but uh, we'll be back and then we'll uh, get this all cleaned up and then um, we'll show you putting it back together. And so anyway, I got the top case cleaned up and as you can see, it is nice and uh, white, creamy white looking now. It's not yellowed anymore. Uh, if it does look yellow, it's just because of the fluorescent lighting, but no, it looks really good. I mean, it looks the same as the inside of the case now. So that's what you want. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, we're ready to go back together. Now, I do have a little little spot here. Now, I'm going to kind of doctor this up a little bit, okay? And uh, right there, that's... I, and I really, honestly, I think that's... Um, I don't know what that is. It could be, um, it, it could have been a, a bump on it, or it could have been actually, you know, an, in production. So I'm going to try to clean that up a little bit, okay? So what I'm going to do is very gingerly, I'm going to use this uh, 220 fine. This is a sponge, and this plastic, it sands extremely easy. So what we're going to do, let me move the keyboard because I don't want to get it all dirty now because that's all nice and clean. And what we're going to do, let me swing this around a little bit here. And um, so we're just going to kind of lightly kind of clean that up a little bit. Just 
easier to do it now than later. And I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. And if it gets dirty, like I've already got it dirty, I'll clean, I'll wash it off here. There was some stuff on my sponge here, but I'll, I'll wash it up here. So anyway, I'm just gonna make it look a little nicer. And, uh, let's see what we got here. See, that's a lot. See, that's already see how much smoother that looks already. You know, I'm just taking the high spots off of it, but I'll, I'll, I'll wash, I'll hit it with some alcohol here and I'll clean it up and it'll look good again. But I just want to, just a little bit more there. Yeah, let's see, we'll do, do the edge right there, just clean that edge up a little bit there. And uh, that looks a lot better. I'm just going to, just a little bit more here. And uh, let's see here, we're going to do this a little bit more. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of do this whole thing, just a little bit, just kind of feather it out here a little bit, so that way you don't, it doesn't look so obvious here. And I'm just going to put that again there. And it looks a whole lot better there. But yeah, so you can see it looks looks a lot better. Let me clean it up with the alcohol here real fast here. Makes it look a, it looks a whole lot better there. Let's see. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get it in focus here. It's kind of hard to see because the lighting in here, but uh, right there it is. I'm trying to get this to focus here. Right there. See it blends. It's a lot nicer. It's not so rough looking there. So that looks a whole lot nicer. So anyway, I think I'll just leave it like it is. So now we're going to put it back together here. And the only thing I got to do too is put the space bar back on, but I haven't washed that up yet. Um, so I'll go ahead and put this back on. And uh, I'm just trying to think how I remember how to do this here now. Let's see. So we're going to put this on here like that. And this is snaps snaps down on it just like that. That's on her like that. Easy stuff. It's all back together. Just gonna put the screw back on it here. Right there. Let's put the screw back on it. Yeah, let's see here. Get that back in there. And uh, yeah, this is was an all-day project, but uh, like I said, nine plus hours uh, there you go, that's back in there. That works. Good. I still got a little water in it there. I got all out of there. So anyway, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. It came out really good. I'm very, very pleased how that came out. It looks like brand new again. Like I said, this thing is like near mint shape anyway. So uh, I'm gonna, only thing I have to do is put the uh, space bar key back on there. I'm just gonna clean it up here and, and see how that looks and then uh, I'll continue the video. Hold on just Okay guys, so I got the uh, the space bar on it. And like I said, it's, you know, it's, the keys are maybe just a tiny bit wider than the case, but you know, that's the way they are originally too, because like I said, it, uh, the keys are a different material, but this is, you know, this is a nice cream collar again. And uh, like I said, these little things are that's just mold marks from when they inject molded it. So, but like I said, this keyboard is near mint. And like I said, we try to clean that up a little bit, that little boo-boo on it. But like I said, I think it's just a manufacturing flaw on it. But yeah, I mean, it looks it looks pretty good though. I mean, it's uh, really good. And it came out really good. I'm a little happy at that. And uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, yeah, guys. Um, so yeah, so anyway, uh, very interesting. Take one of these apart and put them together. Uh, again, this is the uh, Apple Extended Keyboard 2. 
and uh, it's the model M3501. And I looked around for my little adapter. I cannot find it. So uh, when I get it, uh, I'll demo it for you. I'll put it on my um, iMac uh, G3 slot loader. And uh, we'll do it that way. Or I can even hook it up to my modern Mac. Because uh, it's got a USB connector on it. So anyway, yeah, guys. So anyway, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, like I said, this was a success. Uh, no casualties that went back together, no problem. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty darn good if I do say so myself. So, all right, guys, you guys have a fantastic week. And I will see you guys in the next video. And this has been Dave's Vintage Apple Tech.